we now have the details of the season five ptr through the campfire chat that we just watched and here are the details but i do want to cover some housekeeping items prior to me summarizing the live campfire chat from the diablo 4 dev team and that is a lot of you watch my content yet do not subscribe to my channel so if you could please subscribe to my channel it would help my channel grow immensely i would appreciate your support and don't forget to hit the bell this way when i drop content you will get notified immediately and also i live stream every evening on twitch channel name is sammy caps i'd love to have you come over and say hello we'd love to have a chat with you we're a cool vibing community sammy caps on twitch okay now that i got all this used car salesman stuff out of the way let's get to the details of the ptr so the ptr details are live tuesday june 25th that's when the ptr testing is going to start it's going to run for one week that'll take us to july 2nd it'll be available only for pc battlenet users sorry console players once again you're not part of the mix <laughs> uh it's going to include the customary cust uh character boost so you can boost the character to 100 right away but the one thing that they did for this ptr test phase for season five is the fact that they've actually copied our current characters and put them in the ptr so if you would like to play a current character you have in season four you can play that character through the ptr testing so something different from this season four ptr the devs are also looking for specific feedback from players on the following areas. Your overall experience with the Infernal Horde, and we're going to get into the Infernal Horde, the new endgame mechanic in Season 5. How do boons and banes feel? Your experience with acquiring and upgrading compasses. How do the difference, how do the difference difficulty levels feel? How are the rewards overall and which do you like the most or least? So this, these are topics that the Diablo 4 dev team are specifically looking for feedback on. So if you can make a mental note of those while you're doing, if you are participating in the PTR and provide feedback along that addresses, sorry, these questions, because they're looking specifically for that feedback, obviously, you can add any other feedback you want to add. Of course, that goes without saying. Okay, so what's the new mechanic? The end game mechanic? Infernal Hordes, as it's called. They coined it Returning to Hell. It's end game content. The availability of this activity will be unlocked in World Tier 3 by completing a short quest line. This activity will be accessed from a portal in Zarbinzet. Players will be fighting waves of minions from hell on their own turf who are rallying to Mephisto. This will include the introduction of the Infernal Hordes feature on the PTR. The Infernal Hordes will be a wave-based endgame activity similar to Helltides that will actually take place in the Burning Hells instead of it in Sanctuary. Access to this activity will require a new key called an Infernal Compass. The compass will range in difficulty from tier one through tier eight. Lower tiers will run for about 10 minutes and higher tiers run as long as 15 to 20 minutes. Low tier compasses will drop from Nightmare Dungeon, Helltides, and other activities. High tier compasses can be obtained by upgrading low tier compasses with a new consumable called Abyssal Scrolls. Players will be rewarded with some drops in between the waves of enemies spawns and will also need to make some survival style choices with the infernal offer prior to proceeding with the neck wave at the end of each wave players will select a boon and one bane that will impact the remainder of the event like nightmare dungeons players will only have a limited number of revives during the event the event will culminate in an all new boss encounter that will feature the fell council formerly the high council in diablo 2 yes you heard me right guys 
the High Council from Diablo 2 is coming back to Diablo 4 with new designs and abilities. Players will simultaneously have to battle with three of the five fell priests. So it's going to be RNG. There's five of them. Randomly, three of them will be selected for us to encounter during this battle. Players will simultaneously have to battle with three of the five fell priests. Like I said, certain enemies and many events will drop burning ether, which is a new currency that can be used to open chests at the end of the event. Players can change the burning ether for different types of awards including a new legendary and unique item master working materials or gold one randomly rolled item with a guaranteed greater affix including some new unique items and this is where target farming comes into play guys is the fact that when you're running this event at the end you get to choose what reward you want to take so you can target farm these chests and let's say you are master working gear gold is an issue for you you can target farm the gold rewards and continue to attain gold if that's something that you need desperately which a lot of players do um so that is the new uh end game mechanic now during the campfire chat the demonstration of the infernal hordes was a tier three and I happen to notice that the monster levels were level 100. Now, the question was asked what the high tier, what monster level will the high tier be for Inferno Hordes? And the answer, the response was the tier eight, the monster levels are going to be at uh, 180 to 200. So it's going to be a very difficult challenge at the highest tier tier eight for this new endgame mechanic okay what else is coming down the pipe there's going to be 50 five zero new uniques and legendaries will be introduced in season five all of the new season five unique items will be included in the ptr all existing unique items will be updated when the season starts so there's new locations for target farming unique items, including mythic Uber uniques. So you can target farm unique items and mythic slash Uber uniques through, we can now gamble through the Obel vendor. You can target farm them through the Helltide chests and you can target farm them through the Whisper caches. So for example, if you're looking for a specific let's just say boot for a unique boot or a mythic boot you can target farm that specific chest uh or through the helltide or the whisper cache or you can gamble boots through the obel vendors and this is again another way of target farming these new uniques and legendaries they also said that unique items should be powerful and exciting that direct players to certain builds it should be easy to tell whether a unique item is a is good as soon as you pick it up compared to a legendary item that needs to be tempered and masterworked in order to realize their full value players build their legendary items and while their structure while they structure their character build around unique items players should ideally include two to four unique items in their le late end game build they really went in on the topic of they want to see players really gravitate towards the unique items and preferably they would like players to have two to four is what they said in the campfire chat two to four uniques in their builds the game will move away from generic one size fits all unique items that end up dominating the meta for every class players should have more specific reasons for including any unique item in their build the upper power for all unique items will be increased and will drop on a broader range so there's going to be different ranges of the affixes starting from the low range all the way up to the high range so uniques are going to get a lot more powerful and have a range of power the upper power for all the unique items will be increased and will drop on a broader range stat affixes will also be updated to further simplify and even less conditional and may include stats that are currently available only 
from tempering. So they are considering putting some of the temper manual affixes into uniques. Staff power levels and effects that fit the theme of the unique item will also be improved. Uber unique items, mythic items will also be updated. So they demonstrated in the live campfire chat that the mythic is now gonna have a new color beam. We sound, I love it. Sounds like a, I don't know. It sounds like a, you're murdering a bunch of like church organs or something <laughs> like that. It's just like crazy. Yeah. But yeah, so you know, when this thing drops, you're definitely gonna know when you got one. No more like sifting through your uniques to see if it's actually one of the mythics. Uh, you'll know right away. So we're really excited about this. Super happy it was able to get in. That's that. How about general updates? So invulnerability skills now begin their cooldown when the invulnerability ends rather than when the skill is activated. This will lengthen the skill cooldown. This will lengthen the skill cooldown interval to prevent infinite invulnerability from happening. The duration of enemy crowd control duration and frequency has been reduced. And this is a good one. Players will be able to use potions while CC'd or stunned. So hopefully you can avoid death. The devs have been looking closely at this issue associated with tempering, and they currently <laughs> still approve of preserving the possibility of heartbreaking items. However, they are also looking at ways for players to sway the RNG. And how did they do this? They talked about that they are now adding one additional tempering role will be added per greater affix on an item up to a maximum of three additional rolls. Now, what does that mean? That me and they're gonna make it retroactive. So if an item has a greater affix, you now will get plus one tempering roll. If an item has two, it will have plus two tempering rolls added. So you'll have two more attempts to not break that item and it goes all the way up to an item that has three greater affixes. So you will get potentially at a max three more rolls, temper rolls to try to get the affixes that you want. They said they are going to backdate this. So if people have held on to items that they've bricked and they just happen to have greater affixes, they're backdating this. So when all our stuff gets moved over to the season, uh, to the internal realm, when season five starts, you will have one roll for that item that you brick that has one GA. You'll have two more rolls attempts for the one that has two and three, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So they're backdating it, making it retroactive. Anyway, this is their first attempt at addressing the issue of item people complaining about bricking items and how high the high probability of it is they're adding a couple of more roles depending on how many greater affixes it has so there was a bunch of qol um, quality of life updates sorry and the devs want to address some of the game's major pain points during the season five so they are doing this prior to the vessel of hatred expansion and that is good news for people that are, you know, target farming bosses. The boss ladder summoning. The summoning pylon in ladder boss dungeons will automatically reset after killing the boss without having to leave the dungeon. This means that there will be no further need to have to repeatedly leave the dungeon, reset all dungeons, and then travel again to the boss room when farming ladder bosses. All rare items will be removed from ladder boss loot drops and will be replaced with more gold. So clearly they're hearing the complaints about how expensive it is to masterwork. So they're adding a lot of different ways for players to target farm gold and earn gold. The sell value of all ladder boss summoning materials will be increased so players can get more gold for any unwanted materials. Again, addressing that concern. Okay, so specifically the boss ladder changes. Beast, of ice, beast in the ice, this boss will no longer be summoned by crafting and activating a glacial fissure nightmare dungeon sigil. The beast will now reside in the same type of standard dungeon as do the other ladder bosses. However, summoning the beast will still require the same quantity of distilled fear 
to be deposited into the summoning pylon. The journey to the beast boss room will be considerably shorter than before. Players who have leftover Glacier Fissure Nightmare Dungeon Sigils in their internal stashes will still be able to use them to summon the beast. Varshan, the summoning material required to summon this boss will be consolidated with four different body parts into just one malignant heart. Players who have leftover girling heads, black and firm femurs, and trembling hands in their internal stashes will still be able to transmute them into malignant hearts. Health tides and grim favors. This is another good thing that they did. The devs noticed that it's been taking players too much time to complete grim favor activities during hell tides. So the grim favor activity will be concentrated into only one of the zones in each hell tide region. There will now always be enough grim favor activity to reward approximately 10 grim favor points. Now the devs got into this and said that they found that typically players in order to earn the 10 grim favors were taking like 45, 50 minutes and they wanna see that drastically decreased. They don't wanna see players taking longer than 15 minutes in order to get the 10 grim favors. So this is what they're doing. They're, they they want to see players be able to complete the 10, the 10 grim favor points in about 15 minutes. The drop rate for Baneful Hearts was determined to be excessive and will be reduced to approximately three hearts per 10 tortured gift chests to make them more valuable. Legendary Affix Drops. The devs wanted to make legendary affixes that drop on gear more, universal, more universally applicable to all the classes. So in particular, the damage affixes on weapons will drop with fewer class specific conditions weapon slots so the sorcerer's class will now be able to equip one-handed swords as maces including azurath and doombringer the druid class will be able to equip two-handed pole arms as well as one-handed swords and daggers the necromancer class will be able to equip one-handed and two-handed swords and axes included the butcher's, butcher's cleaver they basically want all the classes to be able to equip and utilize other types of weapon types. Whew, that was a mouthful. Anyway, that is my summary, guys. There's a lot more. I'm going to actually include the actual patch notes, which are live already in the video description. So you can check out all the stuff I didn't talk about. I also want to have clarity on a couple of things. So season five begins August 6th and is going to run to October 8th. And people have been asking, is season six before the Vessel of Hatred? Like there's all this confusion about season six. And guys, it's basically this. Season five is August 6th to October 8th. And season six starts on October 8th. And season six is the Vessel of Hatred. So the expansion is season six. So I hope for those of you that were trying to figure out what's going on, season six, Vessel, how they are actually one in the same. And I hope that makes sense. So the season five is a shortened season, obviously. And then on October 8th, Vessel of Hatred, which is season six will start on October 8th. I hope I didn't confuse anybody. Anyway, that is the live campfire chat summary from my perspective. There's that new end game content. There is a ton of uh, updates with the classes that I really didn't get into. I never get into all that minutia when it comes to the class updates, changing this power, this, all that kind of stuff. There's a bunch of new uniques. 50 uniques and legend there's a lot of stuff that's being dropped but i want to hear what your thoughts are on the campfire chat what are your thoughts what do you think the season five so far what we've heard the next major date that we have is july 18th where they're going to reveal the spirit born the new class uh, that's the major one next major update for this game but I want to hear what your feelings are on the campfire chat. 
Are you happy with what they're bringing to the table in season five? Let me know. I would love to hear your comments. Anyways, I want to thank everybody for watching my channel. And like I said in the beginning, if you can, a lot of you watch my content, but don't subscribe. So if you can subscribe to the channel, it would greatly help me immensely. Thank you so much for the support. For those of you that do subscribe and continue to watch my content, it means the world to me. Thank you. And as always, thanks for watching, everybody. Hope to see you next time. Take care. The opinions expressed in this video are mine and solely mine. Healthy debate is always encouraged. Hate is never welcomed. So get over it.